Okay, so in the previous part, we saw that this, uh, we could have the number three attack the number seven and get this product. And now he's asking, why can't we also have this oxygen attack uh, the number four? So he's asking, why can't we deprotonate this oxygen? The base could deprotonate this oxygen. See, that's what I don't know. How do we know that? Yeah, like, I'm assuming, because he's giving us no solvent. Right? So is he nothing. just saying use the electrophilic lone pairs on the OH and use that to attack carbonyl carbon? Oh, well, um, remember that this is a, uh, it's true that he didn't say what the uh, re conditions are over here. However, remember this is supposed to be a continuation of parts B and C. He's asking why in parts B and C did something not happen? So even though he didn't write them again, he wants us to assume we're still using the catalytic base. Okay. He's asking why did this not happen in parts B and C? So logically, we have to keep using these catalysts that we was using in parts B and C. Um, so yeah, we should still assume that we still have this catalytic base. So the product that was formed in part C, because I'm still having trouble with the nomenclature for like mm -hmm. ketal and acetal and hemi and whatnot. So this is, this is hemi definitely because there's no H, but is it a ketal or an acetal? It's not a hemi though because it's not connected to two hetero. Right. Yeah, this is neither a hemiacetal or a hemiketal or an acetal or a ketal. And here's to see why. Um, remember, how do we produce all those things? What type of reaction produces hemiacetals and ketals and all that? What, what, what two things have to react to produce those? Um, so you, what type of nucleophile? Um, we have, those are produced when alcohols attack carbonyls. All of those things, ketals, acetals, hemiketals, hemiacetals, those are all produced when alcohols attack carbonyls. Alcohols attacking carbonyls. But here we have an alpha carbon attacking a carbonyl, not an alcohol attacking a carbonyl. So just because we're attacking a carbonyl doesn't mean it's going to be an acetal or something like that. It's only when an alcohol attacks a carbonyl that we're going to produce a ketal or an acetal. Does that make sense? Or a hemi. Or a hemi, that's right. All of those things, those four things, hemi uh, yeah. and full yeah. acetal and ketal, are only produced when alcohols attack carbonyls. But in this reaction, we had a um, alpha carbon, a carbon attacking a carbonyl, right? Okay, by the way, how can you recognize then when you have um, one of those things? It's when you have a carbon with bonds to two separate oxygens. Hemiacetal, hemiketal, full ketal, full acetal, they all look kind of like this. Um, a carbon bonded to two separate oxygens. All right, these could be OH or OR, and then these could be a hydrogen, but what you're looking for is a single carbon bonded to two separate oxygens. So when we look at this, we see here we have a carbon bonded to only a single oxygen. So again, it can't be an acetal or a ketal or a hemi. This is just a normal alcohol. It's just a normal alcohol. Okay. Uh, so yeah, you should look out for this. A carbon bonded to two separate oxygens. That's when we have one of those types of things. So essentially this, we can go ahead and deprotonate and use that O minus to attack. That's what you would think. So again, he's asking, why, why doesn't this happen? Why doesn't this deprotonate? And then if this did deprotonate, you would think that it might then attack this number four guy down here. Okay. Um, so he's asking, so this seems logical. It seems logical for this to happen. And he's asking, why doesn't it happen? Okay. Uh, well, looking at it, um, my guess would be, uh, of course, that would form a new ring, right? That would form a new ring. But we already have one ring. Um, and rings introduce rigidity. Rings introduce rigidity. When you already have one ring, things can't bend and rotate as much. So maybe there just isn't enough flexibility to construct another ring on top of this ring. Uh, I think that's going to be the answer here. There's just, things are just not going to be flexible enough to construct another ring on top of this ring. Let's see what the picture would look like if we actually did this.
So I've just redrawn um, the original picture. Uh, and we know that what's, uh, what we're asking is, why doesn't this oxygen just bond to the number four? The question is, why doesn't this oxygen just bond to the number four? Well, you can see why not. It's too far away, and there would be too much strain. Notice how terrible this looks over here. This is way too far away from this number four, um, and there would be way too much strain um, on this ring. This just looks like a very unhappy ring over here. One way to see that is rings hate have, having trans double bonds. Rings hate having trans double bonds. If you think about the way we normally draw a ring, we always draw double bonds in rings as cis. Or at least we almost always do. Whenever we draw a double bond in a ring, we almost always draw it as a cis double bond, like I have here in the cyclohexane. So we should be very worried about trying to form a trans double bond here. So both because the oxygen is far away from the number four and also because we have this trans double bond, there's going to be a lot of strain if this happens. Let's look at the answers and see if that's right. Where is it? Uh, the cyclic hemiacetal ah, would have a trans double bond within the six numbered ring, too high in energy. And also, notice how he's really having to make one of these bonds really long. Right. So I also think that the things are just not in the right position. Okay, I think maybe we, um, I think we saw this maybe once before, uh, a couple weeks ago. So the basic idea is rings introduce rigidity. Normally, there's lots of flexibility in a, an atom and a molecule that can fold and bend in many different ways. But when you already have one ring, that introduces rigidity, and there's not as much other things that you can do. Okay. Uh, all right, so um, because there would be too much strain, we know this oxygen won't really attack the number four. Instead, the number three attack the number seven. That was a good question.